Martin here and a big warm welcome to episode one of my brand new series of wood turning videos aimed squarely at beginners. Over the next few weeks and months we will be going through some basic projects starting from very very simple stuff right the way through to stuff that's a little bit more complicated and even turning your very first bowl if you haven't done so already. In this first episode I'm going to take you around my workshop here in Hampshire in the UK and give you a rundown of the kit and the tools that I believe are essential for starting wood turning but there'll also be a list of nice to haves as well that might make the job a little bit easier. The most important investment you're going to make when you start wood turning is buying your first lathe. Now there are loads and loads of lathes out there on the market and I would thoroughly recommend that before you go ahead and buy a lathe that you research um, all of the different types of lathe that are out there so you can make the best informed buying decision um, when getting your first lathe. Um, I started off uh, wood turning with this lathe from the UK company called Axminster. It's a fairly generic uh, model of hobby standard lathe and it is brilliant for um, getting started and it's, it's really is a very 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 good lathe indeed but as I said there are lots of other lathes um, out there for you to choose from. There's also a lot on the second hand market as well but please do your research um, thoroughly before um, making your um, choice and going ahead and buying a lathe. There are some things to be thinking about when buying a lathe rather than just the price. Um, although obviously price is a very important factor. You need to think, or certainly I was thinking, how big a stuff um, I want to make. Do I want to make huge great bowls and platters or do I want to keep stuff fairly small um, and also am I going to be turning spindles and stuff like that because that will have um, an impact on the choice that you make. This bed here has got a 30 odd um, a 30 odd inch bed so I can turn very long spindles if I want to but in reality I don't turn huge long spindles so if you're not interested um, in turning big long spindles then perhaps a bed um, a lathe with a shorter bed would be a better decision for you. So have a think about what you want to turn and what most interests you in turning and then look for lathes around around that kind of uh, size specification. And also another thing to consider is the amount of space that you have in your workshop. Um, I'm lucky I'm in half of a big double garage here um, but some people just turn in their sheds which there obviously is absolutely no problem at all but if you have a big long lathe um, it may mean that you have to have a rearrange or you know sacrifice another piece of kit in order to fit the lathe in and if you're not turning big long spindles for example then a big long lathe is probably not the right buying decision for you. Um, with a lathe you most lathes will come with a drive centre like this one uh, which is a four pronged drive centre and if you're very lucky um, they'll also come with um, a revolving a revolving tailstock centre as well. Um, most lathes will also come with a faceplate which is very useful for turning bowls on. Um, you can turn bowls off um, a faceplate um, that will most likely come with your lathe but fairly soon after I started turning I went and bought a scroll chuck like this one. Uh, this one is the Robert Sorby Patriot chuck um, and it fits this lathe absolutely brilliantly. It's a nice solid weighty piece of kit but there are loads of chucks out there that are absolutely brilliant. But again with chucks if your lathe doesn't come with a chuck then do research the lathes first because the the spindle in the headstock um, varies um, in diameter and also the thread count as well. After you've got your lathe sorted out you're going to need a set of tools to use on the lathe. Um, my set of tools um, I've had for a few years now and I still use them. Um, it's a standard box set of tools and as you can see they're different lengths now because I've, I've ground them and you know, sharpened them and stuff. But this particular set comes with a diamond tip parting tool, 
um, a round nosed scraper, spindle gouge, roughing gouge, skewed chisel and bowl gouge and that is the absolute minimum number of tools that you need and in fact you don't even need any more tools than this basic set because with this basic set you can turn pretty much anything. This set um, is a generic set again you can get variations of this with various branding on um, all over the world and um, they're high speed steel and as I still use them they're pretty good um, and I have absolutely no problems at all in recommending a set like this made from high speed steel um, and in the Certainly the first few videos in this series we will only be using these tools. Um, I've now upgraded my bowl gouge um, and my spindle gouge um, because I have and also I've ground my, uh, my old spindle gouge and my old bowl gouge down quite a lot so I needed to get some new ones. Another really nice tool to have is a thin parting tool like this one. Um, the parting tool that comes in the box set is, is quite thick um, and exceptionally good at its job and this one um, is thinner so when you're parting off um, parting off pieces on the lathe um, the thinner parting tool wastes less wood than this one. After you start using your tools on your lathe then you'll discover that the cutting edge of the tool is going to dull slightly and you're going to need to sharpen it. So for sharpening I use um, a fairly inexpensive uh, worktop grinder like this one. It has a thick white wheel for putting the edge back on the, on the, on the tool um, and a grey wheel for reshaping if, uh, if I need to. Um, I also use a, a diamond tip or, or a diamond coated uh, smoothing tool that just squares off the edge um, of the white wheel to allow me to get a nice edge on the tools. Um, also I use a fingernail jig like this one um, and it allows you to put a fingernail grind onto your gouges if you want to um, to make cutting a little bit easier than the standard grind on, on gouges. There are turners out there who, who are very, very good um, and hand and hand grind their uh, hand grind their tools. I'm not that good. Um, I, I prefer to have a jig uh, for sharpening my tools. Never ever ever underestimate personal safety and when you have wood spinning on the lathe at several hundred times per minute, if you get a catch and it happens to fly off the lathe, you want something to protect yourself. As I found out last October, when this piece of wood came off the lathe and hit me square in the face and it very nearly broke my nose. Thankfully, I was wearing a face shield like this one. It's not the best one on the market. Um, it only cost um, about £15, which is, uh, what, about $23, $24. It's not the best one on the market, but for beginners, it'll be good enough. Um, there are others on the market that are much tougher and are much more expensive. So again, do research and make sure that you buy a face shield and wear it when you are turning. Um, also, personal safety wise, um, I wear goggles as well. Not underneath the face shield, but for certain projects I will wear um, goggles, especially when applying stains and stuff like that. Also, when you are turning and you're sanding, um, sanding your items down, there's dust in the air. Um, and I would recommend thinking about, for the future perhaps, um, having some kind of extraction system. Um, which I have here. I won't go into that now, but some form of respirator to wear is really important, especially when you are sanding woods. Um, and certain woods like you are very, very toxic indeed, and you don't really want to be inhaling them. This one, um, this one um, is a 3M mask, and it cost about £25, so about bleh, about $40-ish, something like that. Um, very worthwhile investment, but you can use those um, those paper those disposable paper masks if you need to. 
Back at the lathe on a slightly happier note, let's have a look at some of the ancillary items around the lathe that I use to make the job easier and produce the best finish I possibly can on every piece that I produce. The first up um, is a Jacob's Chuck, um, which is essentially a drill for the lathe. Um, and you use it for, well, drilling. <laughs> and, uh, and you can use it for all, all, all sorts of other things as well. And we will be using a Jacob's Chuck um, in a few weeks time as we go through the beginners series. Um, also, I use a bowl sander, um, which is a friction drive um, bowl sander. This is a deluxe version. There are versions out there with longer handles, but basically um, as the piece is turning it pushes round the head um, and sands down the bowl really, really nicely. This one comes with two, two small heads and two big ones. Um, but I also use sheeted paper as well um, in a variety of different uh, in a variety of different grades for sanding down spindles and I cut them down into short pieces like this. A little piece like this goes a very long way. Another tool that I find really useful is a set of digital calipers like this. Really inexpensive um, and extremely useful and we will, we will be using um, calipers like this uh, for various projects coming up in the next few weeks. Um, I also use um, a centre finder like this. Um, which is really useful for finding the centre of bowl blanks and spindle blanks as well. But of course there are more than one ways to skin a cat, um, but this is the method that I, that I prefer to use uh, to find the centre of my blanks. Um, finishes, um, I use a variety of finishes um, and sealers. I've got um, uh, cellulose sealers, acrylic sealers, shellac sealer, um, and finishing oils I prefer Danish oil, um, but there are loads of other finishing oils out there, um, but I prefer Danish um, and also a food safe oil as well. Um, and then over the top of that you can put um, um, waxes and stuff, I mean there's wood wax 22 and there are loads of other waxes out there, um, but what you'll see me using in the majority of uh, projects both in this series and my normal series um, of videos is my own uh, my own finishing wax which I call Hampshire Sheen. So I will be using that primarily um, and perhaps a wood wax 22 or maybe a Canuba wax or a beeswax or something like that but mostly it will be my own Hampshire Sheen. As, you uh, can't turn wood without having wood to turn and there are loads of places and loads of ways that you can get hold of wood um, for your turning. Personally I started by buying bulk sack loads of mixed blanks um, sometimes they were all bowl blanks, sometimes they were mixed with uh, bowl and spindle blanks, but they were all dry and ready to turn in a variety of species. So that's a really good way of getting going with nice dry wood in a relatively inexpensive way is to buy pre-cut bowl blanks. Um, and then you can also ask your local tree surgeon, um, make friends with him and say, you know, if you're cutting down some trees, you know, can you save me a bit, you know, throw him a few quid or a few dollars perhaps, something like that. That's another way to get wood, but that will be green wood most likely um, and you'll have to wait for it to be dry unless you're happy to turn wet wood and then wait for it to dry when you finish. Um, but as you can see, um, I've got quite a large uh, selection of wood. Um, some of the wood's been given to me, um, other woods I've asked for, you know, um, and I don't throw much away either. Um, so I've got all sorts of stuff um, kicking around, all sorts of different species that I can dip into. Um, but if you're thinking about getting going and you want to get going quick with pre-cut dry blanks, then visit your local shop, uh, your local wood turning shop or your local wood supplier, um, grab some boards, or if you're going to be like me, you can buy sack loads of pre-cut blanks of bowls and spindles. And that's it for episode one of the Beginners series, folks. I hope you have enjoyed it and that you found a little look around the tools and equipment that I think are necessary and nice to have for beginners, interesting and informative. Next week, we're going to be getting on to some actual proper turning. Um, but for now, take a look in the description for links across to 
um, various products that I have found on the internet that might be of interest for you if you're just getting going and also over on my website you can read up a little bit more in depth about each of the items and stuff that I have mentioned plus a few others that I haven't. So that's it for this week. I will look forward to seeing you again next week for episode two when we will be getting on to some turning. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.